Hey guys, this is Jake here. Let's see my foot down below. Uh, I just wanted to get on here and do a deck tech real quick. Talk about this uh, Golgari Infect deck I have. Um, I'm going to be doing a talk about how I did at a store championship this past Saturday. Um, and I just wanted you guys to have an idea what I was playing. Alright, so this is Golgari Infect. Uh, we run... Four, four of the Glycerin Elves, four of the Phyrexian Crusaders, four of the Ignoble Hierarchs, and three Plague Stingers. That's our creature package. The Plague Stingers, from time to time, usually they just end up being fodder, but they can sometimes actually pick up some wins. Glycerin Elf, of course, is really good because you can pick up what I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, some of the That's how you get your turn two wins. Ignoble Hierarch, uh, as you know with the other Hierarch, um, it's just a really good exalted is awesome. It gives you a way to kind of grind through games if you don't want to just use your spells in bad spots. And then when you couple it with being able to make a turn two Phyrexian Crusader right now in the format, it's pretty amazing because most of your removal packages are solitudes or furies or lightning bolts or things of that nature. Uh, path um, or the new things from Modern Horizons that are just like insane. Those are usually red and white so crusader usually becomes a really big problem for those decks i'll talk about that a little bit later and probably in the next video all right so over here we got your lands for my fetches i run four verdant catacombs two windswept teeth and the one misty um, i do like running the four of in case for the dual lands that i need to be able to get um, and the rest of them, green is the most important mana that I can actually go through my deck and fetch up. So they all have to have that. The two forests, um, we run pretty slim on the basics. Some decks even run less than two. Uh, I like to have those in case you get, in case you get Path to Exiled or the Beseju, um, things like of that nature. That way I actually have a forest or two that I can go, especially if I end up drawing a forest, which happens more often than I'd like. Um, just the two overgrown tombs so fetchable lands we only have four fetchable lands in the deck um, of course with infect you're hoping to win kind of quickly not have to go into the deep deep waters in the long game urborg just because it's good um, sometimes it does get a little bit weird but a lot of the times it's the mana fixing you need for your phyrexian crusaders there are often times where you don't have the overgrown tombs or you had to save your life total a little bit because maybe in your hand you didn't have the crusaders to begin with um, you had all green spells so you fetched up just your forest against a burn deck but then later in the game this is something you can get that actually fixes your mana to be able to cast the phyrexian crusaders um, pendlehaven a lot of decks have gone away from this but with i haven't gotten to them yet but four ink moth next which are our secondary best creature aside from the phyrexian crusader because it has so much it avoids so much hate. So we've got those four, plus the four Glistener Elves, plus the three Plague Stingers. This gives us really good targets for the Pendlehaven. So I chose to go with at least one of those in there. Yavamaya's Cradle, um, not as necessary, but a lot of the times, late game, both of these lands have one major benefit of being able to use these lands after you actually run out of fetchable lands, as well as we can eventually tap, sometimes this happens quite often, probably 30% of the time maybe, nurturing peaked lands without actually taking any damage from them, which is a big deal. The one Blooming Marsh, it could be another Overgrown Tomb. Again, one thing you have to be careful with with Infect is that you are not very great against the burn decks. Um, of course, Crusader helps that out, but you can't always rely on having Crusader in your opening hand. Uh, it's great when you do, but the rest of the time we have to be wary that we're playing a very narrow game where a lot of our stuff is like feels like a very uh, like we're building on glass. Because obviously, if you put a glistener elf out and then we pump it with a bunch of pump spells and they just bolt it in response, that's not going to feel good. So we have to be careful, and sometimes we have to let stuff get bolted and just chip in for that little incremental damage, and we don't want to take a ton of extra damage. We don't want to lightning bolt ourselves with a fetch in a duel. All right, moving on to our instants and sorceries package. All right, you can't probably read these. These are snakeskin veils. This is instant speed, one green mana, give target creature a plus one, plus one counter, and hexproof until end of turn. 
Um, I like these uh, better than like Blossoming Defense and whatnot because they leave that plus one, plus one counter on. A lot of your really good modern players, they know not to engage during combat. So this is a trick that actually leaves our guys bigger even if they do it at the end of combat or on their turn. This is something we can use to protect our guy just to get that extra damage through. I only run three of the Eugenic Growth. I've kind of gone back and forth on this running the fourth. I think three is the right spot to be in. Sometimes it's amazing. Often, most of the time, this is one of the weaker things in my deck that I actually take out a lot of the time because I think that it's kind of a trap. A lot of the times, the damage isn't going to come down to just getting two extra damage in. Sometimes it does. Most of the time, it doesn't. Um, so I have won a game or two with these before, but they're not as good as what they used to be. But they're still there just because it's too good to give up. And a lot of the removal gets around mutagenic growth, so it's also not as good in that aspect. The biggest thing is, is that you can pay the two life even if you're out of mana to cast it. We run... Three of Vines of Vastwood. Um, Vines is really good. Another way to protect our creatures like the Snakeskin Veil at instant speed. Plus with that kicker of being able to get plus four, plus four, that actually comes in a lot. Plus Vines is kind of weird where you can target your opponent's creatures sometimes in order to protect them from effects that might kill you the particular turn when you absolutely need to. Um, I've actually moved up to running two Fatal Push in the deck. Um, Hammer Time. Ragavans, even though we don't really worry too much about Ragavans, but stuff of that nature, things we need to get rid of in the early game. In the burn matchups, that's Monastery Swift Spears or Soul Scar ma Mages. Um, in the Murktide decks, that's Ragavans, DRCs, and so on and so on. Then we've got B Become Immense. This is a one of, just as a, it can be a huge one shot that we can sometimes sneak through on the back of maybe. An Ink Moth Nexus, or really anything, if our opponent doesn't have anything left. And a lot of the times it comes down to either having it be the last card in your hand, or you top it off the top of your deck and you need to get that extra damage in. Um, it's just a huge chunk, and it's really easy to accomplish with all of our fetch lands. Um, scale up makes a creature a 6-4, and it becomes a worm, and it keeps all of its other types. So it keeps the infect from first strike, the protection from red-white. Keeps the flying. Keeps the flying, and the infect, of course. And then you got Might of Old Corrosive. I tried to keep all the foils underneath. There's a few foils that I still need to get for the deck. Uh, target creature gets plus two, plus two until on a turn, and if you cast it during your main phase, that creature gets plus four, plus four. So obviously this is our turn two kill. We play a turn one Glistener Elf. They have nothing. Let's say they just play a tapped land. Most of 90%, 99% of the time, we're gonna go for it and hope that they don't have anything up that can stop us. We go scale up first because it's a sorcery speed spell. We can of course cast this at instant speed if they do have something. So you go the scale up, it becomes a six four. If they do have something, we use the might of Old Corosa. In response because it's still during our main phase we can still use it like an instant that's going to give it the plus four plus four and so definitely one games off of that turn two kill it's not very often but every once in a while it'll sneak through and get people um and then we got abundant harvest i really like this card for a fix uh sometimes you'll get an opening hand that has one green mana or one fetch in there and you really need to be able to reliably find another land these essentially let us dig through our deck for that. Um, often the best land that we can get, unless we need a particular color, is of course our Moth Nexuses. And on the flip side of that, let's say we have too many lands. We can guarantee we're getting something else, whether it be a, an Infect creature, a Mana Ramper, slash making our guys bigger, or one of the many pump spells we need, or removal spells in some cases. Um, that is the main deck. There's a lot of little different tricky things you can do in the deck. Infect's a lot of fun. I know some people are just like, Ugh. but you know what? This is a cheaper budget kind of deck right now that can really take on a lot of the big decks. I would say the things we have the most trouble with from my experience playing are stuff like the Living End decks and then probably the Teamer Rhinos, the, the Crash Cade. Those type of decks tend to be pretty hard for us. But other than that, we have pretty good matchups against other stuff. Um, I have a sideboard too, but I didn't really take it out. I suppose if you guys want to bear with me real quick, I can 
pull that out so I can at least show you guys some of my sideboard tech. Sorry to see my table. Um, run my kitty cat token. I actually used to run a grist in here, so I used that as an insect token. I don't anymore just because I don't think it's good. I keep the spare sleeve in case I run out. I run two surgical extractions for the graveyard incursion decks. Um, those are something I might consider taking out as there's been less and less where that really matters. Two kitchen finxes for mostly burn matchups. Assassin's Trophy for anything pretty much where I think I need to worry about their creatures or their lands. So that's something I would bring in against probably Tron just so I can keep them off their Tron. This card is really confusing. I've used it once. It, it gets kind of weird when you put it on stuff like the Ink Moth Nexuses, um, how the mutate mechanic works. Um, but it can be a really good way to get rid of troublesome artifacts or enchantments. Things like Blood Moon are really bad for us if we ha can't just go around them and win. Cuts us off a lot of our colors and mana. And there are some artifacts that we'd like to destroy things that uh, stop us from casting one mana spells, like Chalice of the Void. Probably the best sideboard card we have, Force of Vigor. I mean, this thing has won me a lot of games and comes in real handy sometimes. Most of the stuff in our deck is green, and so we're easily usually able, as long as you're paying attention, you can pitch stuff to that. I wish I, I'd like to have one more Force of Vigor. I run the one spell sky just because it's good for taking those pesky targets off of my guys for lightning bolts and things of that nature. Um, although I have found people using it as sideboard tech against me is annoying. Endurance, another card I wish I probably had a couple more copies of. I'd probably ditch these if I had them, but for budgetary reasons, I don't. Abrupt decays, because sometimes you need to be able to destroy stuff and not let people counter it. <laughs> And then, of course, the Bale of Summer, just because if you go against those blue-black blue decks, this is, like, such a good card. So, yeah, that's it. Please uh, like and comment below. Give me any ideas on your thoughts about my green-black Golgari Infect, or if you like Vegeta, because I like Vegeta. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.